Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I'm doing something a little bit different today in terms of the way I film. That's why you're seeing my, um, what's it called? My title screen. Um, I'm actually just going to voice over this video. I wasn't feeling so great on this day, so I thought, let me just do the makeup and I can voice over and kind of watch what I'm doing and chat about it that way. So what I wanted to do, you can see from the title of this video, I called it Stop Ruining Your Makeup. <laughs> and by that, I don't mean like everything you're doing is ruining your makeup. It's these tiny little things that we do that can kind of mess up our makeup a little bit. It can ruin the texture of your foundation. It can ruin your brow shape. It can ruin, what else did I do? The shape of your eye makeup. So I want to go through some of these small little details. I'm going to do one side of my face um, the way I would do makeup and the way I would recommend doing it. And I'm going to do the other side. Well, that needs a little bit more improvement. Um, and again, uh, this is just uh, so, you know, little bits of advice. You don't have to take this to heart in any way at all. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to start with my eyebrows. The side with the scar on is the wrong. I'm doing air quotes, but you can't see the wrong side. And the side I'm doing now is the correct side of the way I would do makeup. So what I'm doing with my brows first is I'm starting with an eye pencil that is very slim, very defined in terms of its tip. And I'm just shading in the bottom of her brow in not like a straight line. I'm not dragging the pencil in a straight line, but I'm feathering that brow along the bottom line of my eyebrow. That way I can kind of gauge what shape I want it to be and how long I want it to be. And I can kind of tidy it up this way as well. I'm not starting from right at the start of the brow. I want to leave that a little bit, I was going to say um, clear, but it's not clear. Well, I guess clear from product. So once I'm happy with the bottom and the outside corner, I then start to make my way from that kind of tail of the brow back towards the front of the brow. And what I'm doing here is I'm just filling in little gaps in the brow, especially along the top, to kind of um, correct the shape. I'm not going above where my brow hairs are, I'm staying where my brow hairs are. So I'm not drawing a shape around my brow, I'm not creating a new shape. So now I'm going to fill in the front of a brow. Here's where I think some people go wrong with this, is that they block it off completely. You can see what I'm doing is one hair at a time strokes. I'm not like cubing off the front of a brow, which I'll show you what I mean on the other side. You can see I'm using my little finger as almost like, um, what's the word, like a pivot, so I'm not putting too much pressure. That little finger helps you keep control of where you're going and how you're using that pencil. <laughs> Look at me just looking around, what am I doing? Okay, so now I'm taking a pen, like an eyebrow pen, and I'm just filling in the gaps that are inside the brow now. So you can see all those almost like, not holes, but gaps within the brow that I want to fill in to make my brow look denser and thicker. And again, you can see I'm doing stroke by stroke a tiny bit at a time. The reason I like doing this and not just blocking everything off is because it gives a brow texture. Eyebrows are hair and hair has texture and depth. So you still want those light and dark areas. Um, if you want your brow to look, you know, a certain way, there's nothing wrong with an Instagram heavy brow. I think that looks great with some looks. Um, but sometimes it's nicer just to have like this bushed up, brushed through realistic brow. So let's move on to the side where I'm going to use techniques I'm not too fond of. And what I'm going to do here is although it looks like I'm going backwards and forwards with a pencil and feathering, I'm actually just dragging it along the bottom, not really lifting that pencil off. And I'm drawing just a straight up line of where I want my brows to be. You can see I've taken it further inwards than my uh, natural brow, which is also absolutely fine, but you'll see what I do with that in a minute. And now I'm just going to quite heavy handedly draw in all the gaps. And at the front here, I'm just going to square off the brow. This is something I see a lot. People do it square. They do it round. Um, I haven't seen any other shapes yet, but you never know. <laughs> um, and I just think this gives a really unrealistic look to a brow. Not only that, but how far your brows come in and the structure of the middle, the centre part of your brows, where it meets um, your, your nose, the bridge of your nose, can change the shape of your nose. So if you work co um, to kind of contour that shape, if you want it um, to be wider, if you want it to be smaller, how far you bring in those brows and how much you block them off really does change the shape of everything, including your eyebrow and including your eye shape as well. 
So now I'm just gonna take that pencil and I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna straight up color in every single gap I can see, um, just dragging the pencil along. I'm not really considering the direction of the brow growth or hair growth. And I'm just filling in the gaps basically and trying to get a solid, solid brow. Um, I'm gonna try and, I believe I try and color in my scar, but it's very difficult with the products I have to draw on scar tissue. Just because I want to show you guys how I, what, you know, what I mean by that blocked in brow. Um, I've actually left some texture in there. The idea was to make it completely blocked off. <laughs> so I'm going to continue to block off that brow, make the front as straight a line as possible, make the whole eyebrow, you know, a little bit more cubey and blocky. I look very impressed with myself there. Um, to me, it just doesn't look right. There's something quite off about it, especially when the front of her brow is rounded off, like circular. It, it doesn't, it is a bit, I don't know, I don't really know how to describe it, but you kind of lost all definition or shape within that brow when you block it off like this. It's nice to have that fluffier or even faded. You can block off your brow like this and then fade it in. So now I'm going to carve my brows. I like carving eyebrows when you're doing a dramatic look. I think it's really nice. Or you're doing no eye makeup and you just want your brows to look really carved out. Or you haven't like done your eyebrows for a long time. That's why I do it a lot of the time because I want to cover the hairs I should get rid of. So I'm using a tiny bit of concealer and I'm just dragging it along. And you can see I'm pulling it down gradually as I go across. So I'm gonna eventually blend that into my eyeshadow base. I haven't taken the concealer onto the lid because for me, eyeshadow, eyeshadow, uh, concealer um, creases, sorry, really easy on the eyelid. I have extremely oily eyelids. If I was to put concealer down as a primer for my eyeshadow, they'll be creasing everywhere. I can powder it, I can put eyeshadow on it. Creases, creases absolutely everywhere. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just taking a fluffy blending brush and I'm just making sure I'm blending where the edge of that concealer meets my skin. And I'm just gently fading that in. Again, I'm not blending it all the way down to my eyelid. I wanna keep as much away from my lid as possible. But I'm just making sure I'm fading out all those areas that look solid and um, chunky. Let's move on to the other side. This is something I see a lot um, done with concealer or eye primers that are more on that concealer texture side. I'm gonna start the way I did on the other side and just by carving out my brow right underneath the eyebrow. But the difference here is I'm gonna take that concealer all the way down to the lid and I'm not blending it, I'm packing on the product. Literally, you'll see me pack lows and lows on. It's fine to pack on product if it is a pigmented product. Um, in term, every product is pigmented. Um, a color product like eyeshadow. Um, if you want that high pigmentation, but here's the difference. Again, eyelids for a lot of people are extremely oily. You do not need this much product on the lid. Yes, it looks aesthetically peely, uh, pleasing, pleasing, and it's good at coverage, but you can get eyeshadow primers that will cover veins and redness on the lid, which I'll show you again later. You don't need to build up this wall, this layer, this mask off concealer. Do what you want on your face, you know? <laughs> but on the eyelids like this, you're asking for trouble later down the line. You'll notice creasing. You'll notice that your eyeshadows kind of do this thing where they stick down wet rather than just being an eyeshadow and gripping onto an, a primer. They kind of, the primer becomes part of a shadow when you do it like this and it becomes this weird wet texture. And you can see again, I'm just patting that product. I'm not blending anything. I'm packing where all the product is in place. Yes. I wanna show you the other side as well because you can see you can get coverage and you can get smoothness on the lid without having to pack all this product on. Do that. But before we do that, apparently I forgot to prime my skin. So what I've done here is I've taken almost a pea size amount, maybe two peas of primer that I know works well for my skin because I'm controlling how much product I'm using and blending that all around my face with my fingers. I haven't poured the product directly onto my face. And in this way, I can kind of blend it in properly, push it into my skin and help it work my skin type. I don't want product just sitting on my skin. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pouring product onto my face with no regard to how much product I'm using, how much product my skin actually needs and what's, what that's gonna do to my skin. Your primer has an effect on your foundation if you're using primer. For example, I have oily skin. 
this is too much product. If I had used a tiny one drop of that product and blended it everywhere, we would have been okay. But this is excessive priming for my skin. Um, and same with everyone really, unless you have drier skin, maybe you can get away with using a little bit more. But when you're priming your skin, don't pour it onto the skin. Keep track of how much product you're using. How is that sitting on the skin? You can clearly see that this is sitting on the surface of my skin. My skin hasn't benefited from um, that product. It hasn't taken in the product. It isn't leaving the texture it's meant to leave on my skin. Primers change the texture of the surface of your skin, whether it's filling in pores, whether it's hydrating. You don't want that product physically just sitting on your skin. Look at me blotting it away because I'm so disgusted in myself. <laughs> Now, what I am going to do on this side is take a tiny bit of that oil that I use on the other side and tap a very, like the smallest, smallest amount under my eye on, on the correct side. Just because I mentioned how the eyelids are super oily, the under eyes are completely different. Sometimes we can get creasing from drying out the product too much or dry, sorry, drying out the skin too much. So hydrate that under eye if you get creasing. I know people think powder and dryness will set it, but sometimes it's quite the opposite. So moving on to prime the lid on the other side, finally, I'm taking a blending brush and I'm putting that um, a tiny amount on my lid, just enough so I have an even coverage on the whole lid and just enough that I get that kind of color correction that I want as well. But the main point of this is not to over pack the product on, not to change the texture of the lid so much that it's gonna affect my eyeshadow. I want it to grip to my eyeshadow. I don't want it to interfere with my eyeshadow. So you can see I'm blending it on very gently, trying to make sure that everything's even. And I'm using a really fluffy brush to do this. I'm not using a flat um, like concealer brush. I'm using something that will blend, just like we like that softness of a blend of eyeshadow. Shadow, I want the same from my eyeshadow primer. So I've already noticed the um, concealer on my lid there creasing, so I'm just going back in with a eyeshadow brush and just making sure that's basically not creasing. Some people say set it with powder and it'll be fine and it won't crease your eyeshadow. Here's the thing, eyeshadow is powder, so just go straight on top of eyeshadow <laughs> if you're going to do this. You don't need to set your primer. So we're going to do a cut crease today and I'm going to show you how I like to start. I'm taking a blending brush and I want the eyeshadow to be quite high, but I'm starting in the crease and pushing my brush in the socket off the lid. We want product to be higher, but the way we're going to do that is blend it up there. We don't want to apply product as high as we want the product, if that makes sense. I'm gonna show you what I mean on the other side also, but I'm packing the color on the outside corner mostly because that's why I want the most pigmentation. So every time I go in with more color, I start from there and blend it inwards towards the nose. And you can see, oh, I don't know what I was gonna say. I don't know why I said, and you can see, um, but I'm gonna take a bigger blending brush and then soften up that color. This is where I start to blend the product upwards. So this is where we get that smoked out look. I'm not physically applying any product up there. I don't know if you can see how I'm holding the brush here, the angle I've come at in compared to how I did before. Before it was quite straightforward. Whereas this angle, I'm kind of angling upwards and that gives you a nice softer blend on the top of the, of the eyeshadow, like above the crease. So on the other side, I've packed my brush with quite a lot of product and I'm basically going to press this product into the areas I want to see color. So instead of blending that color upwards like I did on the other side, I'm going to start to pack product on to the eye. Now this is actually absolutely fine to do. My one concern with this is how high you take the product and how much room you have to blend that product. If you're extremely lucky and have all the room in the world between your lid and your eyebrow, and you have so much room to experiment and blend, then that's incredible, go for it. But if you're like me and your brows are slightly further down, packing products, sorry, packing eyeshadow on like this, you're gonna do it this way, then you have to blend you have to blend upwards and outwards. So it, the product's gonna eventually touch your eyebrow and we have no space, you know, <laughs> no space to do anything. So if you don't have as much room between your lid and your brow, then do what I did on the other side and do it gradually. Add color and then blend, add color, then blend instead of packing it all on at once. But I do have to say with this method as well, I don't like the way it sits afterwards, even after being sorry, even after being blended out. That was a tongue twister. Um, 
I, I find you can always see that shape, that solid shape, you know? It's nicer to have those blended, faded out edges. So now I have one side that's quite soft and one side that's quite heavy. I'm adding a deeper tone now to this side so I can get more depth. And then we're gonna blend that up also. But this way we have, like I said, more depth, more texture. And it kind of looks like we've blended a little bit more rather than having that solid color pressed down. I'm doing exactly the same as I did before, aiming right for that socket, packing more color on the outside corner and gently blending it. And then going over with that bigger brush that I used to soften the eyeshadow originally. And it's just going over the whole thing and blending and fading it out. I'm being very tight with the brush, very tight circles. Um, not going too crazy. I'm thinking about where I'm blending that color. Again, with this brush, I can kind of bring the color a little bit further up. Okay, onto the other side. So we're gonna do exactly the same again. Pack that color right into that crease. Really tap, tap, tapping that product on. I can't help but blend it. I'm really trying not to blend it on the other side. But what we're gonna see here now is a clear divide between the two colors. So on the other side, yes, we have like a very solid color, but you can almost see a halo of another color. Whereas with this side, it looks like I've literally drawn on a butterfly wing, <laughs> almost on the other side. It looks very face painty rather than a blended eye. Um, yeah, again, if you had more room, you'll have more room to blend. You're very lucky people. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the cut crease itself. On this side, I am using a uh, eye primer. It's called Cut Crease Canvas, so it's not concealer. It dries down a little bit drier. And I'm taking my time and I'm being very, very careful with my positioning. I'm considering eye shape. I'm considering where I've um, applied the product. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna almost angle it like a slope. So you'll see on the top, that kind of line that's about to come outwards. I'm gonna take that further. And from the outer point of that shape, I'm then gonna slope it down. My eyesight's so bad, I have to keep leaning into my mirror. I'm gonna slope it down back towards the inside corner. And then we're gonna blend that very gently all together. So I'm gonna fill in the gaps right here. I'm just waiting for me to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna make like a little tail. I make sure everything's straight, taking my time. And you can see again, my little fingers rest on my cheek. If you're not great at precision like me, if you get quite shaky hands, sometimes rest that little finger on the face and it acts like a little pivot. So I've taken a blending brush and I'm tapping over the whole thing. I'm not rubbing or blending. I'm making sure that, that um, the white product, the cut crease canvas, is blended very softly because we want a nice, nice fade. I'm just correcting that shape on the inside corner there. Do I get it? Do I do it? Mm, kind of. That could be better. <laughs> and yeah, there you go. So I'm just tapping out that product. Tapping can also be kind of good at blending, depending on what you're doing, not how we were packing on product. But if you want to softly blend something, get a clean brush and just tap. So I'm just going to rush the side. I'm just going to draw on that line and then I'm going to stop halfway across and I'm going to have a, just like a block, just a full on stop, like the front of my eyebrows, but on the other side. So we don't get that nice fade. We don't get that gradient. We don't get that gradual um, fade in. So moving on to add some color, I'm taking um, just a normal eyeshadow brush, a flat brush, and I'm gonna follow the shape of that slope and just add, I'm just gonna tap in some um, color, purple, whatever, um, which I'm using here. And I'm making sure I'm not ruining that slope shape. And again, we're gonna blend this by tapping. I'm being very light-handed. I don't wanna add too much. Sorry, I've got, oh, that was my email, sorry. I got this really like, um, weird mouth today. So I'm sorry if I sound a bit spitty. This is good ASMR for people who like that. <laughs> so I'm going to take that brush that I was just looking for. And again, I'm tapping that color. I'm not um, blending, like going backwards and forwards. I'm pat, pat, patting really, really quick just to fade that color in. I don't want it to be too intense or too heavy or too strong. And then I'm just gonna add a darker shade on the outside corner, you see where that gap is? I'm just gonna add a darker shade there. So it's kind of consistent, consistent, consistent with the eyeshadow itself. And I'm just, again, tapping that into place. Okay, let's look at the other side and this kind of straight line we got. I'm applying eyeshadow kind of halfway between that straight line and my lid. 
um, just to get the same kind of blended effect. But I just want you to see the difference in shapes. Look, I've angled it. I can't help but angle it. I mean, could be worse. Um, <laughs> so I just want you to see the difference. I'm going to move my chair so it's going to creak. Um, the difference in the two. And I'm physically blending this. So I... Um, yeah, you can just see where the product completely stops. And again, because it's a different texture and we're putting eyeshadow on top of it and it's a little bit drier, not as dry, it's a different kind of dry to an eyeshadow primer. It's quite, um, I guess, chalky dry when it sets, but you can see the difference in texture on the eyeshadow. You see where it's kind of faded and it very suddenly starts. So we will come back to the eyes a little bit later, but let's move on to concealer. On this side here, I'm basically concealing the areas that tend to be the most discolored, where darkness tends to appear a little bit more on the majority of people, not everyone. And I'm also filling that little bit by my nose because I'm getting a bit of shadow there. On the other side, I'm just full on going for it. I'm packing that concealer on, just doing it, having, having the best time <laughs> using so much product. And what I wanted to do with this is I wanted to show you that I'm actually going to get a similar amount of coverage and, um, yeah, well, similar, the same really when you see on both sides and I'm using less product. So I'm using this brush that has a quite dense, um, it doesn't have a quite dense, it is quite dense. And um, I'm patting that on to, uh, God, what am I saying? Sorry, I'm using it to pat on the concealer. So you can see I'm kind of building it up in the areas where I need a little bit more coverage. And then I'm gonna blend that outwards. So I'm taking it right up to my hairline just to kind of cut off that eyeshadow. being very careful in these areas to not ruin the outside corner. Then I'm gonna to go to inside corner and then start to spread that across. And poke myself in the eye apparently as well. Now, although you may need more coverage, some, sorry, I should turn off my volume. <laughs> that was my email again. Although you might need more coverage, more coverage doesn't always mean you need to use more product. You need to be a little bit more tactical with the shades of a product you're using. If I had extremely dark circles, I would have used a peach color corrector. And I don't mean orange or red, I mean peach, depending on the depth of your um, deepness. If you have very dark under eyes, then I would go more orange to red. But you really can sometimes just get away with using a concealer with a red undertone. That's one or two shades darker than your actual skin tone and then brightening up with a concealer that's lighter. So on this side, I'm not thinking about blending. I'm just packing in that product where it sits and I'm going to take it right up to my under eyes, just building that up, letting it just sit nice and wet on my skin. <laughs> So now moving on to foundation. I'm taking a tiny bit at a time. This is a full coverage foundation. I'm taking the smallest amount and building it up where I know I need a little bit more coverage for me. It's my cheeks and around the corners of my nose and kind of on the bridge of my nose. But as I said, I'm taking it step by step, adding a tiny bit. And I'm using this duo fiber um, hair brush. I actually think it's just one fiber, but I'm used to calling them duo fibers. And this is gonna help almost stipple on that product. And by doing this, I can gauge how much product I'm using, how much coverage I need, and you know what's being covered. And I'm building it up area by area. I'm not just putting on a mask and then blending that. And yes, I did my ears. Have you ever looked at a picture where you're wearing foundation and you're like, oh my God, my ears are, and my chest are really red? Just, just whack a tiny bit of foundation on there. <laughs> so now I'm building it up in the areas where I know, again, I need a little bit more around my nose, like I mentioned before. And I'll just move on to the forehead and add a thin layer up there. So what we're doing on this side is I'm taking my foundation and a flat foundation brush, and I'm just applying this product where I need product or where I want product. Whereas on the other side, what we did is gradually build up the product and we had somewhere to blend it. With this method, all you can do is push the product into the skin where it is. You have no way of blending this out. But I guess that all depends on what you consider blending, <laughs> really. Um, but yeah, like I said, you can see we're kind of plastering it on and we're just gonna, instead of blending, we're gonna kind of pat into place exactly where it is. So we're getting that full, full, 
full, full coverage. I personally don't like this method because it's a little bit less um, controlled, I guess, and all that texture you're building up, there's a few things that are gonna come into play with it. How we've used our primers underneath is gonna affect how much this product moves now. Whereas if we blended it out a little bit more, it would be a little bit less, there'll basically be less product to ruin. We're gonna do the same on the forehead as well. Now, this is something I've seen online, maybe like on Instagram mostly, um, is people literally painting it on like this, doing the same thing again that, that we did on the face. So <laughs> that's the amount of coverage you're gonna get. Um, but not in a good way. The, the best way to achieve a full, full coverage isn't by putting loads and loads of products in that one space. You want to gradually build it up because then you can kind of see how the texture's working with the skin. Once you apply loads of product, the only way to go back on this with, with um, foundation is to take it off and start again, but then you have to apply your primer again. So texture can change um, on the skin depending on the product you're putting on top, not change, it can become more noticeable. So I really wouldn't recommend this. Say you have like drier areas of skin or more dehydrated areas of skin, more porous areas as well. You kind of want to build up that product in a different way to you and um, the rest of the face. Now, in my opinion, this good side looks much better, smoother almost than the full coverage side. You can't see as much texture. It doesn't look as shiny and greasy. And that's simply because we prepped the correct side with a primer that was good for my skin type um, and the right amount as well. That over priming with oil on the other side, which isn't for my skin type, has kind of left this layer of moisture on my skin. That's going to affect all my layers of makeup. It's affecting my foundation, which is really greasy. Now we're packing on, packing? I was about to say packing, packing on this powder, I meant to say baking, and this is going to look uneven and textured because the foundation is going to be absorbing that powder in different ways on the differently textured parts of my skin. I was just, oh, just watching it makes me feel, oh, I felt so dry doing this. And listen, if you want to bake, that's absolutely fine. I just, one thing I do see a lot, which I, like, concerns me a bit more, is people that take it right up to the under eye, give that skin under the eye. Like we said earlier, we're trying to hydrate the skin under the eye. We don't want to dehydrate it then with powder. Um, I'm going to show you how I powder my under eyes with just enough powder to um, keep it on, but not make everything look dry. So I'm taking a, like an eyeshadow blending brush and I've tapped off any excess powder. You can see all that powder flying off. I'm just tapping it into the area under the eye. Not too much, we're not overdoing it. We're not overly drying it out. We're setting that foundation, not suffocating it with powder. And I'm doing it bit by bit, a small amount at a time. You still get a blur, you still get a nice smoothness as well, but we're not giving the under eye that creepy, horrible, texture where all these lines appear out of nowhere. Lines that you actually don't have. It ages your under eye by like 20 years. Maybe not on camera, <laughs> but in real life, you know, it just makes it look so crepey and, and crinkly. So I'm going to let that powder sit on the other side, just, you know, I guess like doing whatever it does, letting it do its thing. And what am I doing now? I don't, oh, highlighter. So I'm looking at my face and I'm seeing what areas catch the light on the highest points of my face. So you see, I kind of twitched my head at the beginning because I'm trying to catch the light from my lights, basically. So when you go out in daylight or when you're out in like a restaurant, say not that we can really go anywhere at the moment, but the light will catch the higher points of your face in a really nice, delicate way. Instead of doing, I'll show you what, like, I do on the other side, but I'm just doing these tiny little areas, and I'm not doing a stripe just in any direction. I'm kind of going, again, where the light catches. So on my cheek, it catches right there, on the um, high points of my cheek, and then I'm going to blend that out even more with a powder brush to make it even softer. And if you do want more of that blinding highlight, then do the same, but with like a strong like liquid highlighter, for example. And this isn't about using too much highlighter. Use as much highlighter as you want. It's for positioning almost. Now I've uh, wiped away that powder and on camera, it looks really smooth. You can see me kind of pushing the skin and how creepy it really looks in real life. It looked horrendous. It still actually kind of looks okay on camera. Um, yeah, not a fan, not a fan. 
So I want to do a little close up of my face on each side and just kind of explain it. So my nose um, is quite porous anyway. It's not the most even off texture. So this is a foundation sitting on my face. I try to do a full coverage, which I wouldn't usually do on my kind of texture of skin. Um, I would find other ways around it. But um, this is as smooth as I'm getting with a right primer and the um, right application method for my skin. And this is the other side. Now, there is not just one thing we can blame for this texture on the nose there. It's a mixture of everything. Too much primer, again, for my oily skin. The application method of foundation. The excess powder that I had to then mix in with that excess foundation. <laughs> then wiping it away, almost taking away a layer of that foundation. Under my eyes, you can see it's kind of dry under there. On the other hand side, it does look a little bit drier. That's just my under eyes. But I can now go over that with something hydrating, like a setting mist or a bit more concealer and tap that out. Whereas on the other side, there really is no hydrating that side anymore. So it's kind of screwed from, from here on out. I could try and hydrate it again with like a hydrating mist. But then that hydrating mist is gonna then blend with a powder. And we kind of, we're mixing up all these textures together. But again, I do just want to add that this is, isn't is just because of baking, it isn't just because we're doing full coverage, it isn't, well, it mainly is just because of a primer, to be fair. Um, yeah, even the right hand side, like off this eye, looks really smooth. I'm going to turn down the lights later on in this video so you can actually see what it, it really looks like on camera in real life. Okay, so time to highlight this side. And all I'm gonna do is a strip of highlight, not really taking into consideration where I'm putting it, just going right on a little line down there. And I'm going in with an excess amount of highlighter. Now, again, an excess amount of highlighter isn't bad. If you do like a really strong highlighter, this is where you need to consider the highlighter and your skin tone. Don't just go in with any like frosted product. If you're a skin tone like mine and I wanted to do an insane highlight, and high and highlight a highlighter with maybe a peachier undertone would have been a better decision. But this is gonna give me later on, look at all that powder on my shirt. Later on when we tried to add um, blusher, bronzer, contour, it's gonna give me this really gray kind of weird tone on my skin. So blush placement for me is something a little bit more personal. You can kind of do your blush where you want, but of course it does has has, oh my God, what's wrong with me say? It does have an effect on the shape of the face. So I like to keep mine right up in this corner where I'm doing it first. That's where I like to apply the majority of color. And then I like to bring it downwards um, depending on what um, kind of look I'm doing. I like to take mine, I've been really feeling like 80s blush right up in the hairline, you know, <laughs> fading into the hair at the moment. So that's what I'm doing here. And I've kept it right up there because I think it likes, because, uh, oh my God, because because I think it um, lifts the face a little bit. And I'm doing a tiny bit on the forehead just to warm it up. Nothing crazy. And I might even go over this with um, a, a powder bl uh, brush again and just kind of smooth it out. By the way, I'm trying not to edit this video so much. So when I'm like choking on my own words, it's like I'm just letting it happen. <laughs> and I'm just softening it out a little bit more now. But I'm really considering where I'm placing that. On the other side, whack it on just where you think a blush would go. So apples off a cheek, also up right there. It's just a straight up line. Um, and I'm not really considering where my highlighter is with this side. On the other side, I kind of went around, I like scooped around it. But on this side, I'm just going ahead and just blending it in and just seeing what happens. Here's what we want to do with blusher. Ideally, we want to sandwich our blusher, sorry, our highlighter, blusher, bronzer, contour. So your contour, which is at the bottom, can overlap your bronzer, but then that shouldn't overlap, your contour shouldn't over overlap your blush. Then your bronzer shouldn't overlap your highlighter. So it's almost like one layer is okay to touch the next layer, but not the layer after that, if that makes sense. That sounds so sciencey, but it's, it's not. <laughs> so I'm giving this side the benefit of a doubt and I'm really buffing that color in and making sure that we don't just have a solid line. And I'm taking a little bit up in the temple here. So there's been a trend online at the moment, and this is why I'm doing this, of people putting red on their forehead. It's okay to do a tiny bit of red. Um, everyone's doing it with lipstick, <laughs> but you can warm up that area absolutely with um, blusher, bronzer, contour, whatever it is you need to. But do make sure it's blended in. Otherwise it kind of just looks like, you know, you've colored your hair and it's giving you a rash because you're allergic to the dye. Um, yeah. Okay, let's add a very delicate contour to this nose. On this side, I'm just going straight in, straight line, very heavy handed, 
Um, can't remember what else I did. <laughs> and on the other side, if I remember correctly, I'm going to go in very lightly and delicately, maybe with a different brush. The brush I used on that side was actually quite stubby and hard. So for the other side, I'm taking a really fluffy, again, eyeshadow blending brush. I'm holding my brush right up at the tip so I get a really light hand and I'm just gently adding that slight shade to the skin so it doesn't look like a red strip down my nose. So I just took a second to put on some lip product and I did add a bit of blush. Um, and I, I think the camera stopped recording, I didn't realize. So sorry about that, but I just put it where I put the bronzer, um, but not too high up. So you'll notice on the left side, my eyelid was creasing that whole time, I didn't realize. So I'm just taking a second now to um, smooth that out. And that's mainly because of my concealer that I use as a base instead of my um, eyeshadow primer. But I am just going to reinforce both sides with a little bit of white eyeshadow, just over that white area, just to add maybe more depth as well, make it a little bit brighter. Um, yeah. So I've just taken a minute to do under my eyes, add some mascara and do the pencil on my waterline. So just as an extra little trick, nothing important, I'm just taking the same blush that I used earlier and I'm using that to go around the outside of my eye makeup just to make it kind of blend better with the rest of the face because it's such a different contrast of colour purple to my skin tone to the blush. So it's nice to kind of make it all kind of fade into one, one look. Okay, so let's go in with some lashes. I'm just taking my lashes straight out of the box. And what I'm not gonna do on this side is consider where the end of my lash goes. You can see it dips below that kind of outside line of my eye makeup and doesn't quite, um, I mean, it kind of brings the eye down. You can see the left side of my face, our left, is creasing again, <laughs> even though I've put the white eyeshadow on top now. Um, so that's where I'm gonna place the lash. What you kind of want to do is make sure that, imagine like an invisible line on the outside corner of your eye and you kind of don't want your lash to dip below that line if you're going for like a lifted look. On the other side I'm taking some lash scissors and I'm just cutting from the outside part of the lash two little like lashes, I don't know what to call them, you know when it kind of sprigs, sprigs, <laughs> sprigs out, two little bits, not too much, just to make sure that it fits on my lash line correctly, let me try and get in focus, and um, doesn't drag the outside corner of my eyes down. So we will take a close look at these lashes in a minute. I'm just pinching them together and gonna give them a little push up to make sure that they're poking up and you can see the shape nicely. So what I'm gonna do on the other side, the, um, I keep saying incorrect, but I guess the side that needs improvement, is I'm gonna put mascara on the false lash itself. Now, here's why I personally don't like doing this, is I choose an eyelash for its um, shape. You can see the lash coming off the inside corner where it's so long for my lid. Um, I choose a lash for its shape and the way it's designed, the way it's made. So mascara ones are designed to make your own lashes look a certain way, and that's exactly what they're gonna do to a false lash. So you've chosen a nice eyelash for its shape and now we're ruining that shape or changing that shape where I can't stand that creasing on the lid and we're changing that shape with a mascara now so you can see it's now kind of all clumped together because I used a mascara that was thickening and lengthening and the way they do that is to clump some lashes together and add depth so look at the lash on the left it's really like dipping below and the one on the right hand side is giving us, I think I'm pushing it up a little bit more now, is giving us a nice lift. It's um, in shape with the rest of the eye makeup, considering we've took it up and outwards. And on the left, it gives us a really big dip. And my eye just looks bigger that way as well. So I've turned my lighting down. I think I caught myself shaving here at some point, I didn't realize. Um, so you can see my nose, heavily textured. Under my eye, I don't know if you can see right under my lashes where they kind of flick up on the inside corner, all that texture there, it almost looks like my skin is pulling on itself. You can see that blush and that bronzer in the beard as a straight up line. Um, yeah not a great look here really everything looks very heavy textured again that's not because of one thing it it's all part of you know a routine and you can see my eyelid is creasing as well uh let's take a look at the oh look at it oh god it's such a horrible texture and let's take a look at this side. Um, my nose is still a little bit like, I call it crusty, um, <laughs> but that's just my nose at the moment. I'm not very well. My skin really reacts when I'm not too well. And my cheeks, like a normal person, has a little bit of texture, but we've helped kind of smooth everything out a little bit by not adding too much. I think we like to think that makeup covers everything, 
but really, um, it doesn't. <laughs> it, it can highlight some things as well, depending on what those things are. So you can see my nose is definitely a lot smoother. Um, and my skin isn't like moving with itself, you know, it doesn't look like it's attached to itself. Oh, and there's the other side again. Look at that nose, Jesus. Okay, well, you know what, I think about now, I should have probably done that in natural lighting, but it's fine. You, you saw texture, we saw everything, because it's real skin, but we saw how makeup and prep, how you prep your makeup, can really kind of excessively exaggerate that texture on the skin. So remember, makeup is makeup, that's fine, but there are theories behind it that kind of are there for a reason to help your makeup be the best it can be and look the best it can be. And these aren't drastic changes. They're very subtle changes. Like I'm sure if I um, added a little bit more powder on the correct side, we wouldn't have had that um, excessive amount of cracking on the nose. And if I used the same primer on either side, I think we wouldn't have had that excessive cracking either. But it does just go to show that if you follow these kind of like online techniques that aren't personalized to you, you know, they don't know your skin, you know your skin, you know how your makeup works in your skin, you know how much your skin can deal with. If we all follow exactly the same rules that we see online, then it doesn't really make sense. So there's a theory behind what you should be doing to your skin with your makeup, with your primer, and just taking those little subtle changes and little tips for all these different skin types is, um, can benefit, can benefit in a really, really good way, good way. I'm so ill, it's making me, I'm fine by the way, I just have a cold, it always happens to me this time of year, but my brain doesn't work as well. So I'll be back to normal next week. Thank you so much again for joining me. If you have any questions, do please leave them below. Um, I hope I explained everything right in this video, but sometimes, you know, you do it and then you watch it back and you're like, that doesn't make any sense. So <laughs> do leave your questions below. I'll be more than happy to have a look through them and answer them. And yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I will see you next week. Bye.